Greetings hobbyists, this is our Sands of Vol. And in this video we're going to have a look at how to make a mesh and then have a look at how we can make that have an effect to look as if it's been torn either by some battle damage or by something ripping out of it to escape. So I've got this object here which could be a floor tile and a window. It's a little bit asymmetrical to make it a little bit more interesting and we're going to add this mesh to it. So the first thing we need to do is shift an A and we are going to bring in a plane. And that will do because this is mostly a square object. And I'm going to make that so it will cover the entirety of this hole. At this point, I'm going to press the slash button on the number pad, and that will bring us into isolated view so we can just look at this by itself. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to need to subdivide this. So I'm going to go into edge mode, and I'm going to subdivide this as many times as I want. So subdivide, 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 maybe one more time. And I'm going to come back out so we can have a look at what that looks like. Could possibly do one more. No, I think that's probably going to be too much. So I'm going to leave it at this just because otherwise I think we're going to end up at the point where this won't 3D print. Now, for some reason, mesh has a tendency to not be in this direct pattern where it's horizontal and vertical. And while we could rotate this around, we're actually going to fix that so we don't have to. So forward slash on the number pad. And I'm going to, with the edges selected or the faces selected, I'm going to go into face and I'm going to poke faces. And you'll see what that does is that breaks up all the faces into triangles through the center of each of the faces. Just so you know, you can do this by pressing F3 and typing in poke and it will come up with that. So you don't need to go to the face option if you don't want to. And then we're going to go to face and tries to quads. What that does is that turns the triangles into quads again, but now you'll see they're at a diagonal. At this point, I'm gonna go out of isolated mode and I need to get out into object mode. That's really important because otherwise this modifier is not gonna work or at least you're not gonna see it. So add modifier and then I'm gonna use this arrow to get to the bottom. You'll notice sometimes it hides some of the modifiers because they don't all fit on this table. So down there and wireframe. And you can see straight away that we're getting the effect that we want here of this mesh. It's turned all of the individual lines into a mesh and I'm gonna have to fiddle with the thickness. Now. I'm gonna to have to go a little bit more exaggerated than I want to, probably something to about there. Otherwise this isn't gonna print successfully and even this might be a little bit of a stretch. So you're gonna to have to pay attention to what your printer can manage and then make some decisions based off of that. Might even be able to go a little bit wider. No, I think I'm gonna go back to 0.04. Now, regardless of this when printing, it is gonna be a very good idea to print this as close to vertical as you can. Uh, so whatever you do here, that's gonna be really important. Now, at the moment, this is not gonna be solid. And this is another thing that people make an error on. We're gonna to have to fix this so that it is solid. So let's just go into isolated mode again with forward slash. And you can see why it's not solid because the edges here are not closed off. So this isn't a manifold object. Now we're not gonna be able to edit this. If I go to edit mode, it just brings back the plane. So I'm gonna to have to apply this to be able to do it. So we need to make sure we're happy at this point to continue with the size. I was, so I'm gonna click apply. And now when I go into vertex mode, I've got access to all the geometry. All I'm gonna do is click those four, press F to create a face. And then I'm gonna to need to do this for all the rest. But a quick way of doing that is if I just go into edge mode and select one of the edges here and press F, I can keep pressing F and it will go all the way around adding those in. So we've now got a solid object with no particular issues. If I go to 3D print and check all, we can see that there's no issues here. So this will print fine. So if this is all we want, a mesh, that's great, we're done. Uh, we could just Boolean this together and we're good to go. But we want this actually a bit torn. So let's have a look at how we're gonna do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cut this mesh into two bits. Now we can do this in a complicated way or we can do it in a relatively simple way. I'm gonna go for a simple way to begin with. So I'm just gonna bring in a cube. I'm gonna do this without using any add-ons and I'm gonna make that nice and big and I'm gonna G and X to move that over to the side. And I'm not gonna do this right in the center. I'll do the tear somewhere to the side. Now to make this a little bit easier on us and making sure that this is gonna be fairly simple to manipulate, I'm gonna go into snapping and I'm gonna turn that to snap on vertices. And then here, I'm just gonna press G and X again and then take it to one of those vertices. So it's literally gonna cut it along one of those seams in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is use ball tools. I use ball tools a lot. So if you've seen one of the other videos, you've probably already got this. If not, go to preferences, add-ons, type in ball and you want to activate ball tool, 
it gives you many more boolean options and i'm going to select my cube select the mesh second and i'm going to go to object ball tools and i want to do a slice so now that we've sliced it what we've got is we've got one object here totally separate to the other object here and i'm going to turn off that snapping they will use that again later so how am going to make this look torn well the quickest way is to go into vertex mode I'm going to select some of the vertices. I've used Shift and Z to go into X-ray mode. And now I've got those vertices. I'm going to turn on proportional editing, which is this button up here. Now, if I now press G, I can move this around. And if I use my mouse wheel, I can control this circle that's in the center. And you can see that that will allow me to move more or less. So I'm going to go somewhere like there. And you can still use proportional editing if you click R to twist these around and again make a nice interesting shape for this tear so that looks pretty good and then i'm going to do the same for the other side so other object vertex mode shift and z to select the vertices so i'm selecting all of them okay otherwise you might miss this one at the bottom then with proportional editing still on i'm going to press g move that around keep the circle size relatively similar so that we have a tear that looks relatively equal on both sides and again I might rotate that a bit to make it a little bit more interesting and we've got this ripped apart area now maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger just just so it's a bit more interesting on this one side now back into object mode we want to make sure that this works and we're going to combine these two meshes back together in a way that's going to allow us to do this as easily as possible so we're going to look at where there's some slight imperfections in this for example this gap here that's not going to do anyone any favors so let's get that sorted so all i'm going to do is go into vertex mode i'm going to turn my snapping back on proportional editing off select this vertex here you'll notice sometimes you have problems with these vertices for example here there are two of them underneath each other so all i'm going to do is press a to select all the vertices m and merge by distance and that's going to get rid of all of those vertices that we don't want combined together and now when i go back to select this vertex and press g i can move it and i can snap it to that vertex and then i'm going to do the same here here and at the bottom here now all of these ones look already joined up because they haven't moved and I'm going to do the same over here. So these ones looks fine. Let's get this one sorted. So G there, G, G, and the one at the bottom, G. So now I've got these two bits. All of the rest of the mesh lines up except for our tear that's in the center. So let's combine these back together. I'm going to click that one, then that one. Control and plus because ball tools will allow us to do that nice and quickly. And then here I'm going to apply all and hide this side which is now duplicated. So we should have this mesh as one object now with our tear coming out of it. And if I go into vertex mode, I'm going to do the standard thing of pressing A, M and by distance just to get rid of any duplicated vertices. And at this point we've got our torn mesh. We can leave that as it is or when we get to it we can merge this together now i would be careful with this for example there's a little bit of an overlap here so i would probably get rid of that using something like box cutter or just use a boolean to limit that to only be to about there to not overlap with that circle so we don't get any problems when boolean as you can see we've got this bit of mesh here if i just just bring in a mesh again doing this without hard ops or anything like that bring it over there rotate it maybe break it a little bit bigger and just control and minus hide that and now you can see that mesh doesn't go up to that hole and we're not going to have a problem so i'll do that on all four sides thank you for watching i hope you found that useful and please do give the video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed and look forward to seeing you next time